getting ready to feed live baby brine shrimp to the aquariums for a late night dinner since I fed them a little later today. All the little goldish dots you see dancing around are the baby brine shrimp. And this mini, this is a two liter container uh, hatchery that I have. This is the brand. And I put in not quite a teaspoon of uh, um, cysts. I think that's what their eggs are, is the cyst variety. And you just add some salt to the water and bubble it. And in usually 18 to 36 hours, depending on your temperature and other conditions, they hatch. You'll see I have a light source down here, and that's to attract all of them to the bottom. And you can kind of see down below, it may not be focused, but all sorts of them uh, congregating down towards the light. And the hatched eggs or whatnot are floating at the top. So there's a little valve here. I'm gonna pour them out into a little net that uh, we'll catch most of them, and I'll put them in some uh, regular dechlorinated water, tap water, and then uh, take a turkey baster and uh, feed them to the tanks. And we'll try and get some footage of the fish going after these. This is probably more eggs than I did my first attempt. So there's a lot of them here, and a lot of them are alive. I may have had them going a little bit too long on the first time, it went like 48 hours. This has been a little over 24 hours, um, if that. Um, probably could have hatched them earlier in the day, but they're all getting attracted to the light. That's gonna make pouring them out easier and uh, make less of a mess. So we'll do that and then I'll demonstrate feeding. Okay, I've uh, poured them out using this very fine threaded, um, net some of them do fall in this other container and i didn't quite empty it all the way out all the black on the side is um eggs but there are still some in there but there's plenty in here for what i'm going to feed you can still see them kind of dancing around in there so i've got a turkey baster this is a, a no drip turkey baster and we just kind of inhale them in to the turkey baster and you can see if I get the focus going correctly maybe not um, them dancing around in there and we'll just take it over to a tank and squirt them in so we're at my original 20 gallon tall I've got my brine shrimp you can see the fish swimming around there's the flower from the lily that's bloomed and I'm going to pop this open and squirt them in one second. All right, here we go. I'm gonna squirt them in. So I'm just literally dumping the water in here. And if we take a look, you'll see all the little brine shrimp. And you're gonna see these fish start hunting like crazy. You see the rasbor harlequin rasboras really going and chomping at them. All the platies up here at the top. I don't know how much they really like these things, but the, the tetras and the rasboras definitely do. Um, usually when food's added, the corridors at the bottom start going nuts and uh, get ready to go get them. So I'll do uh, maybe one or two more turkey baster squeezes in here and uh, see if the guys like it. And again, we've got turkey baster full of them. You can see them dancing around and we'll squirt it into the water. Some people say you can't overfeed this stuff because these things are so small, but you can see the rasboras really like. There's a platy starting to chomp down on them. And we'll go do a couple of more tanks. All right, got some more. And we're gonna go over to one of the 20 gallon longs and well, it's kind of getting to be nighttime mode here, but everyone's still awake. But you can.
can see all the little dots are the baby brine shrimp. And the tetras are definitely going nuts trying to find every little speck that they can eat. The powder blue grami, he's getting kind of excited trying to figure this out. And these things are real small for probably what he would prefer to eat. There's a couple of snails. Uh, they don't eat these. But you can see kind of how all the little dots are starting to disappear as these guys chow down on it. And we'll do a little more. And there's a lot of little dots in that one. And these guys will just go to town. Baby brine shrimp is helpful with babies, so your fry. And it is helpful if you want fish to try and start making babies, spawning and doing all that fun stuff. So not a uh, thing you should feed regularly to adult fish, but it's good as a nice little treat. And some of these panda quarries down here, I don't know if they will snag them and eat them, but in theory they will. Um, you can see there's a lot of little dots here and many of them are making their way to the bottom and the panda quarries will try and get in on the uh, the action of it. So fun, uh, fun little thing to do um, with expanding the hobby. Now we're gonna do it. Now we're gonna do some uh, baby brine to my guppy tank. It's also a 20 gallon long, and there are little babies in here, so this should be a good nutritious meal for some of the fry that are still very small. peek down again you see all the little brine shrimp going these guys should be real excited even the adults because this will uh, encourage them to make more knowing that there's a source of food that the fry can eat guppies are a live bearer which means they are born alive out of the female as opposed to eggs that get scattered and uh, let's see if we can find a couple of the small ones in here There's one of the small, a couple of small ones. You can see them. They're gonna really like this micro food. Get a little closer. And usually they will eat and eat and eat until they, their bellies get nice and full. And they'll be nice and happy. Got a really heavy dose on that um, pull up with the, uh, the turkey baster. So there's a lot in here and some of it will fall to the bottom. I'm not sure if the coolie loaches will come out and eat it. I don't know if we're gonna see any. They kind of hide in my slate down here. There's an assassin snail. It's uh, preying on the pest snails, but I don't know if the coolie loaches will come out, but they they might. Maybe I'll come back in a minute just to see uh, what happens. There's a female guppy. You can tell it's a female because it has a triangular anal fin. It is less colorful and has dark spots on the rear of its abdomen. That's the gravid spot, as opposed to these males that have a lot more color, big fluffy tails, and um, just a uh, the, the little bit smaller um, than the females as well. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of snacks for these guys tonight. And there's one of the mystery snails. We'll do one more tank. All right, we're at the Neon Tetra and Honey Grammy tank. And we're gonna drop our baby brine in. see the little tetras are going kind of all over there's the honey grammy watching these guys eat is uh, really a lot of fun especially with the baby brine shrimp because it just you just kind of see them doing a very uh, strategic hunt and devour 
and I know the filter is probably kicking them up a lot over on this side of the tank. Um, but you can kind of just see how these little specks in the tank disappear so very quickly as they uh, grab and go, so to speak. And there's the honey grammy, nice uh, yellow fish. Complements uh, all the blue and reds of the tetras and uh, kind of acts as a centerpiece fish for this tank. Might put a little bit more in here, but uh, got smaller tanks to uh, add some food to, but just wanted to share this kind of experience uh, with y'all as I do this for the second time. And just because it's one of the smaller tanks that has a few guppies in it that are growing up, uh, we'll give them a little smaller sampling. This was a tank that used to be by the front door uh, before the, the Neon Tetra tank got deployed, but uh, there are a couple of smaller guppies in here, and uh, you kind of see them go all about, picking them off. If you are curious about cleanup, it's just a matter of rinsing out the device. Um, you know, also rinse out the, the output tube, but once you kind of rinse it all off well, it's... The stuff doesn't really stay there very long, and you can uh, get it ready to run again the next time you're ready to make brine shrimp.